Hey everyone, Mike here. There is a lot going on in Ukraine, and I sincerely hope this conflict ends as soon as possible. I posted a video last week about Starlink activating coverage and sending Starlink terminals to Ukraine. Well, those are now there and confirmed working. You can see a whole truckload of round user terminals here. The first report of working coverage was actually from Ole Kutkov, who actually already had a Starlink dish that he was reverse engineering, but he hung it out the window and it actually worked, it got coverage. Later, we got pictures of the new terminals up and running. You can see one there on the roof. There's also more news on Starlink mobility features, which I'll talk about later in the video. Now, in that last video, I spent a lot of time looking at the threats that Starlink might face if the Russians wanted to stop it from working. All right, I'm gonna just jump in there. Uh, I have this video all ready to go, uh, but last night, Elon Musk actually tweeted that this actually has started happening with Starlink. Uh, Russians are actually actively jamming Starlink frequencies for hours at a time, disrupting service, and SpaceX has started to take action. They pushed out a software update that has bypassed the jamming, and even more significantly, SpaceX is dramatically reallocating resource to focus on cyber defense and more advanced techniques to combat this jamming. So much so that it's actually delaying some Starship and Starlink version two work, slightly delaying. So this is actually happening and Elon Musk is really moving SpaceX to orient to prevent this. So major, major news. I'll do a whole other video on it in the future, but I just wanted to jump out where that happened last night before this video was published. So, okay, back to the video. Well, it turns out that other satellite internet operators have been having issues since the start of this war. Viasat reported on Monday that it was, and I'm quoting, experiencing a partial network outage impacting internet service for fixed broadband customers in Ukraine and elsewhere on European KSA network. Our investigation into the outage continues, but so far we believe it was caused by a cyber event. We don't know much more officially, but Sky News has reported that an insider said preliminary indications were that the outage was a result of a distributed denial of service attack. And they say that kind of started with the start of the Ukrainian war against banks and government websites uh, at the same time as Russia started the invasion last week. There's also been some reports that the end user modems, now these are the Viasat modems, not, not Starlink, had been bricked. And I couldn't find any, let's say, more reputable sources for this information. But if that's true, if this was an actual kind of attack against the end user devices, then this could potentially take a lot longer to uh, for Viasat to restore service to their customers. In addition to Ukraine, the KISAT coverage is actually over all of Europe. So this outage is also having knock-on effects in other areas, including reports of disruption to remote wind farms in Germany. Netblocks.org monitors connectivity for networks around the world, and you can see the drop for Viasat starting on the 24th and continuing on until at least the 2nd. So, as typical of cyber attacks, it's hard to say for certain at this time who's responsible, but taking down internet connectivity as part of a physical attack seems likely. If you consider power generation to be critical infrastructure, then this could also be seen as an attack on other nations in Europe, even if it wasn't intended originally. And what that might entail in terms of escalation of this conflict, I don't even really want to think about it because that could be very severe. What's interesting is that uh, NB65, a collection of hackers using the kind of anonymous brand, has been actively trying to disrupt Russia's satellite control systems. You can see an announcement they posted here on Twitter. Russia responded denying any real disruption and also saying that if there ever is disruption, they would consider it casus belli, uh, a little Latin lesson for me, uh, an act to justify war, kind of an act of war. Now, of course, Anonymous isn't a country, so it's unclear 
who would face this retaliation. But it's definitely intensifying the focus on the cyber aspects of this war, which so far have been lower, actually, than anticipated during the lead up of the invasion. So back in Ukraine, the concern now is that Russian cyber attack or physical attacks could swing towards Starlink. Hey, me again, as I interrupted at the beginning, this actually has started happening. Active jamming of the Starlink signal to deny coverage. SpaceX is oriented to try to combat this with new software updates that are bypassing the jamming for now, but significantly shifting resource to fight this jamming and to defend against cyber attacks. Major, major news for a big company like SpaceX to dramatically shift like that, delaying other significant projects. So back to the video, but I'll follow up more with this in a future video. There continue to be large disruptions to parts of Ukraine's internet infrastructure. It's possible that Starlink could become one of the only remaining options in many areas. Elon Musk even tweeted that the probability of being targeted is high. The main focus of Elon's tweets are around the risks to people on the ground using Starlink. The Starlink dish is a transmitter, which means the signals it's sending out could be used to target an attack. They're also pretty much perfect white circles, which can be clearly seen from above. From his tweets, Elon Musk's advice is to put the running Starlink dish far away from you and only turn it on when you're actually using it, when you need it. And even to paint the top of it a darker color using a non-metallic spray paint to not interfere with the RF signal. The most interesting new capability disclosed from all this is that the user terminals with current hardware have been updated remotely to allow fully mobile operation at low power, low enough to be powered by a car's cigarette lighter while the car is moving. This has been a huge ask for many users looking to use Starlink in RVs and boats. I've actually done a few videos on my experimentation with running Starlink in kind of a, a man portable, off-grid, solar setup. So definitely take a look at those videos if you're interested in how I've got it set up. There's also been a lot of discussion already over the past few weeks of roaming capabilities being trialed in North America. The ability to get service outside of your home address without needing to change your home address in the system. I'm doing some tests with my own user terminal and I'll update you all on the results in another video. If you want to see more of those updates and other cool stuff going on in commercial space, subscribe down below and click the bell to get updates as soon as they're posted. Don't forget to click the like button while you're there. It really helps the channel to grow. My heart goes out to everyone affected by the war in Ukraine. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.